Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Oh, that wasn't good enough for our new guests. M-I-Z. That's a little better. That's a step in the right direction. Uh, good morning. I'm Mike Kelly, the voice of the Missouri Tigers, and I'm very honored to be here with all of you today as we begin a new era in Mizzou athletics. There are a few people that we'd like to welcome before we begin. First, please welcome the Reed Francois family, ladies and gentlemen. Members of the Board of Curators, Robin Winokur, please stand. Greg Hobrock, please stand. Student Representative, Remington Williams. Faculty Athletics Rep, Pam Bruzina. University Council, Steve Owens. Member of the Search Committee and a former curator, Mr. Don Walsworth, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> former Director of Athletics, Mike Alden, is with us today. <laughs> the all-time winningest football coach in Mizzou history, Gary Pinkle, is with us today. <laughs> Current head coaches, basketball coach Conzo Martin. Women's basketball coach Robin Pinchton. Softball coach Larissa Anderson. And from track and field, Brett Halter. As you know, yesterday, the curators officially approved Desiree Reed Francois as the 22nd director of athletics in University of Missouri history. Today, we will get a chance to meet her and her family. We'll learn more about her vision for the future. But first, we have the proud leaders of our institution who want to share a few words. Our first speaker not only represents the University of Missouri as a member of the Board of Curators, but his history started at Mizzou as a student athlete on the football team from 1992 through 1996. Please welcome my friend. It says Daryl Chapman. Those that know him well, it is Chopper, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right, thank you, Mike. Great to see everyone here today. As you know, this university means so much to me, and so does its athletic program. For the past few years, we have seen bold and transformative leadership across the university system. This week, we have taken another incredible step forward with the hiring of Mizzou's new athletic director, Desiree Reed Francois. At Mizzou, we have high expectations for our student athletes to perform in the classroom, as well as on their respective fields, courts, tracks, courses, mats, and in the pool. Each sport has their sights set on a national championship. We are poised for that success with Director Reed Francois. Curator Lehman, who served as chair of the search committee, describes her as tough, dynamic, and an innovative leader who can help build upon our successes and position us to regularly compete at the top of the SEC and beyond. I couldn't agree more. As a former student athlete, a proud Mizzou graduate, and the chair of the University of Missouri Board of Curators, I am very excited about the future and direction of our programs under Director Reed Francois's leadership. Congratulations to the entire Mizzou family, our student athletes, our university, our fans and supporters. We're building great things together. Thank you all for being here. Mike, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Daryl. Well, when we talk about bold, and transformative leaders. Our next speaker is certainly that. Please welcome University of Missouri President Moon Choi. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Curator Chapman. August 11th, remember that day, because that is the day 
today where we're going to begin that new era. Let me be the first also from the administration to welcome the Francois family to Colombia. You're going to love it here. It's a great town with people that truly believe in inclusion and making people feel welcome. So welcome to Colombia. Now prior to the search, we met with about 100 people to ask, what are we seeking in the next athletics director? And what we heard was that the key attribute should include someone who's dynamic, fearless, a person with high integrity, who's deeply compassionate and innovative, and someone who gets up at 4 o'clock each day with the hunger to make Mizzou better. And that person is going to expect the same from every single individual that works at the university, that works at Mizzou Athletics, from student interns all the way to our head coaches. I want to thank Curator Lamer, Lehman and the entire Search Advisory Committee because they did their job. They found that true person who was the best person for the job, period. And we're so happy to have you here. So thank you. Now, there are many people who work in leadership that talk about going from good to great. And that word has been used so often, I believe it's lost its essence. So today, I'm going to throw down the gauntlet. We're not going to go from good to great. Today, we're going to go from good to becoming champions, the very best. And with the right leadership, the right vision, and the investments, we can get there. But that commitment to become the very best requires alignment and investment. The Board of Curators recognized this when we were challenged by our peers regarding our research and academic success. And they knew for us to compete, for our faculty to compete, that they needed the best resources. And that building that's being completed by October, the next gen building, is the first of many investments like that. In the same way, for athletics, we are going to develop that strategic vision together with the entire staff that's led by our new director. And we will make investments so that we can achieve the excellence that we expect. Because we need to develop that championship culture, not only at Mizzou, but for the entire state of Missouri. And she is the person to do it. So yes, she has the vision, the experience, and the tough-mindedness that we need. She's going to be making some deep, but necessary changes. So business as usual goes out the window with our new athletics director. She's going to bring that culture of winning back to Mizzou. And we deserve it in the state of Missouri and at this great institution. So without further ado, let's welcome in the next exciting championship driven era of Mizzou athletics. It's my great pleasure to introduce our new athletics director, Desiree Reed Francois. name, so I'm glad that it fit. <laughs> well, good morning. And I should actually just start with challenge accepted. So thank you. <laughs> well, good morning to all of you. And thank you so much, President Choi. Thank you for your faith. And and, and really your support in this incredible opportunity. I cannot wait to partner with you, so thank you. I also want to express my sincere appreciation to the Board of Curators, to Chairman Chapman, thank you, to Curator Lehman, who can't be here with us today, but my goodness, he was inspirational in our search process. And to the, enti the entire search committee, and for all of your professionalism, for all of your passion, for all of your belief, in what, not only in me, but what we can accomplish together. I am so fired up. 
So I would also be remiss if I did not thank the wonderful people at UNLV, the student athletes, the staff, the coaches, the leaders, and everyone, all of our supporters at UNLV and the Nevada System of Higher Education. We're working side by side. We were able to enhance the student athlete experience and elevate the entire athletics program. Under President Whitfield's leadership, I am confident that UNLV is on an incredible trajectory towards excellence in every aspect of the institution. Now, I am not standing here today leading one of the nation's best athletic departments without the support of my family, my friends, and my mentors over my life. With us today is my husband, Josh, my son, Jackson, um, who not only have supported me in my career, but who bring joy to my life. I also have my extended Francois family with me, and I'm so proud to have you all here, so thank you. Um, my mother passed away last year, um, but I know that she and my dad, back at home in California, um, I know they know how much they mean to me. Um, to my mentors, Whit Babcock and Debbie Yao, thank you for setting an example of leadership and integrity. My younger brother, Roman, he can't be here today um, as he's back in California. However, I suspect that he is watching this press conference. <laughs> I'm assuming that we're streaming it. Um, <laughs> and my brother personifies everything. Um, he personifies perseverance and determination. And it's actually because of him that I'm in college athletics. And I got into college athletics um, to begin with. You see, on September 10th of 1994, my brother broke his neck playing football and became a quadriplegic. Um, watching him day in and day out, trying to achieve the impossible, struggling to accomplish the simplest tasks um, that we all take for granted inspires me. His original promise was to play football. Um, however, now his future is still incredibly bright. It's just in bright in other ways. But watching Roman he inspires me, and he's the reason why I do what I do. Um, I'm inspired to help others achieve those dreams, and that's the reason why we're here. Um, I am focused on the student athlete, and I want them to have the incredible, holistic experience that my brother never did. Um, earlier this morning, I had the opportunity to meet with our student athlete advisory council executive team, and I was blown away. These are some passionate and talented and committed student athletes. I met with a football team yesterday as well. And I am just, I'm, I'm inspired by what the perseverance and the resilience and the determination that they bring. I cannot wait to meet all of our student athletes. Our student athletes will always be at the forefront of what we do. They'll be at the forefront of our decision-making processes and they deserve an athletic department with the championship culture that President Choi spoke about. We want everyone to give their absolute best every single day. As a department, we want to graduate leaders. We want to graduate leaders though with a meaningful career path. We're going to relentlessly compete and we're going to win SEC championships. We're going to serve as a point of pride and unity for our entire global Mizzou community. Now, championship cultures requires a universal commitment to daily excellence. We will be known for our work ethic, our innovative spirit, and our team mindset. Whether it's hosting a recruiting visit, greeting guests at games, being a great campus partner, excellence is the expectation. Our coaches have scoreboards that provide them with daily accountability in wins and losses. But every member of our athletic department, they also have a scoreboard. And we're going to hold ourselves to high standards of accountability that we should expect at Missouri. And that begins with me. I will never ask more of anyone else that I would ask, than I would ask of myself. And when I'm all in, I'm all in. And together with our students, our coaches, our staff, our alumni, our donors, and our campus leaders, we're going to create a world-class experience that attracts the best and brightest and that allows our students to better themselves and bring home championships to Columbia. 
Too all right. <laughs> to our incredible Tiger community in Missouri, around the country, around the world, my family and I, we cannot wait to meet you. I will have a lot of listening and learning to do today, to do in the days ahead. But I can promise you that we will have an athletic department that you can be proud of day in and day out. We will keep what has worked and innovate for the future. We compete in the best conference in the country, and we should regularly compete for SEC championships, which will put us in the hunt for national championships. But ultimately, I know this is the show me state, and I know that our actions and our results will speak louder than my words. But I know this league, and I know we can do this. We can be one of the nation's best in everything. Everything that we do will reflect this. Missouri is an incredible university with visionary and aligned leadership. We have supporters who truly care and passionately want us to win, but win with integrity and win with sportsmanship. We're gonna win with dignity. We have a dynamic group of coaches and staff that care very deeply about the institution and our student athletes. And we have a collective vision for excellence. We have a storied tradition to which we owe so much to those of us, who, to those in this room that have helped build it. And so together, we will accomplish unprecedented achievements at Missouri. And I am so humbled and I am so honored to be the steward of the Tigers athletic program and I cannot wait to get started. So thank you very much for having me. Before we transition into the questions and answers, I believe we have a moment in time where we'd like uh, the three to maybe stand for a photo, if we could, really quick. President Choi, if you'll join for a photo. Photo. Okay. Photo? Yeah, sure. Three of you together? There we go. Just together. Be, just together. All right. Thank you very much. So now we begin the questions and answers. Um, portion of the program for the members of the media. We do have three microphones in the room. I would ask you to wait for those after you raise your hand. I also would ask you, because today is an introduction for you as well. So please stand, name your affiliation, and that way we can start putting faces uh, with affiliations uh, for the Director of Athletics. And so our first question today comes from, if someone will raise their hand please, Let's go with Dave Matter from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. If you'll please stand and take the microphone, Dave. Don? Yes. Hello, Desiree. Welcome to Columbia. Welcome your, your family to Columbia. Um, when you analyze this job uh, and, and the position that Missouri is in, what did you consider the biggest challenges in, in, the, in the, both the short term and the long term that you and this department will, will confront? Well, I have the privilege of being in the people business. And so I really am looking forward. You know, I actually saw, the first thing I noticed when we actually came to campus in June, um, but what I saw was actually opportunity. And I saw this AAU institution. We're the only Power Five school in the entire state. There's 114 counties here, and I want to get to know people. So I saw this incredible opportunity. This is, an, we have great coaches, we have great staff, and I saw really just phenomenal opportunities to really go and, and make our mark in the Southeastern Conference. This is the best conference in the entire country. And, and you know what? We deserve to be here. And you know, we're going to go compete for everything. So in terms, I, I saw more opportunities as opposed to challenges. But first priorities is I want to get to know our people. I, I want to find out about our, I want to get to know our student athletes. And I want to get to know our global Mizzou community. First row here to your left. Desiree, uh, Gabe DeArmond with PowerMizzou.com. Uh, this seemed to come together from the outside pretty quickly. Can you take us through the process of when you first kind of heard from Missouri until Sunday night when you took the job and what that was like from your side? Um, I'll defer the search 
process to the president. Um, but you're right, it came, it's been a whirlwind, <laughs> that I can tell you. Do you want to talk about the search process or do you want to? Well, it's fine. The uh, search process was scheduled to be about four weeks. But we always said from the beginning, if we find the right person, we're going to end the search and make the hire. And that's what we did. And it was also very important. We have a little bit of rivalry with Tennessee. They did it in two weeks. We did it in 13 days. And that was very important. We got to win it. I told you we're going to compete for everything. <laughs> Second row to your left, please. Go ahead. Ben Arnett from uh, KOMU TV here in Columbia. Um, I think we've seen just about every issue possible confronting college athletics in one off season <laughs> lately, but athletes want to win, coaches want to win, fans want to win. From your seat in the AD chair, what has to happen to build programs that win consistently with everything else you're, you're dealing with? Uh, nice to meet you. Um, it, championship culture, right? We have to have a championship culture because it's not just a coach that drives winning. It's all of us. So we have to all be all in. And like I said, I'd like our athletic department to be known to be the hardest working athletic department in the entire conference. I want us to be the most innovative athletic department and team. We've got a, we're in a service business and we have the privilege of serving um, this great community and our student athletes, our constituents. And so we're gonna be hardworking, innovative and team oriented. And when we get that culture right, that's a whole part of a process. The wins are going to come. And we're gonna be right there partnering with our coaches to make sure they have the resources they need to be successful. We're gonna recruit fine student athletes who are the best and the brightest that are gonna represent this great university and this great community so incredibly well. And you know, once when you put that foundation and you put that culture, our habits, and we have those habits and we're holding one another accountable, the results will come. First row to your left. Hi, my name is Benjamin Hockman from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Nice to meet you. Nice uh, you mentioned your mentors. Can you share some wisdom that they passed down to you and why they're so important to you? Certainly. Um, my first mentors were my parents. Uh, my mother taught me that uh, to treat people with respect, but also don't say it, Desiree. You go prove it. You go show it and you outwork everyone and let your results speak for, speak for themselves. Um, and my dad taught me the love of learning um, I have a grandfather who's 98, and he speaks 23 languages. And <laughs> granddad, read, granddad read, and he plays tennis every single day. He's amazing. Um, and when I try and explain what my job is to him, he's like, uh, anyway, that's a whole other story. Sorry, I went on a tangent. But my grandfather, um, he's, he taught me just to love and embrace learning. And I always want to try and get better. And so that's why I've, um, there's been mentors, there's been so many mentors in my life. And, but it started with my family. Um, from, I had the good fortune of working at the university, well, I don't know if I should say good fortune anymore since there are rivals, but at the, the University of Tennessee, but at the time it was a very good fortune. But you know, we've moved past that, but anyway, um, I digress. But so Coach Summit was a mentor and Coach Summit taught me the importance of alignment. I asked her why, how did she win all these championships and she, obviously recruiting, but also the alignment. You have to have alignment with your board, with your president, with your board, with your president, with our coaches, with our student athletes, we all have to be in it together. And then Coach Beamer. Coach Beamer taught me the importance of team and service and treating people with respect. And part of treating people with respect is also holding them accountable. So I've had incredible mentors. And then Bill Walsh. Um, Coach Walsh, when I was first coming out of law school and I was at San Jose State University, he was a San Jose State alum. And he taught me uh, the importance of an attention to detail. So I've, I've had the privilege of having incredible mentors. I mentioned Whit Babcock, who worked here, um, and he taught me the importance of building an inclusive team. And then Debbie Yao. Debbie Yao is, um, she, she taught me the importance of measures, measurables. And if you aren't gonna measure it, you aren't gonna do it. So. We're going on the aisle to the third row. How's it going? Welcome to Columbia. Andrew Coffin with KMIZ here Thank in you. town. Um, we got Conzo Martin right here. I know you guys have a relationship from Tennessee. You got quite a few Mizzou connections. I'm curious, uh, what is your relationship with Conzo and, and how good is it to, to get to work with him again? Um, so yes, Conzo and Roberta, uh, we've known them for about a decade. And you know, I was on the hiring team that, that helped uh, bring Coach Martin to the University of Tennessee. And 
we had all these metrics and all these analytics, but when my boss, at Mike Hamilton, asked me for my opinion, I, I said, you know, Conzo Martin is someone I would want my son to play for. And then fast forward a decade, and, and you know, that our student athletes are someone's sons and daughters, right? And I, I have a son, and when Jackson, uh, when I was thinking about Jackson, we were talking about his future, Conzo is someone who I want my son to play for. And you know, I believe so much in the University of Missouri that I'm giving you my only son. I'm giving us our only son. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, Coach Martin and Roberta, they're very good family friends of ours, and they all, and I'm, we're really proud to, to be here alongside them. Coming back to the first row, right here to your left, Desiree. Hi, Colin O'Brien, Jefferson City News Tribune. Uh, with your law background and your sports law background, how do you think that in particular um, can be applied to name, image, and likeness and that kind of change we have seen in the past couple months in college athletics? So lawyers, we can't cure cancer. We can't really do very much. But the, a couple of things that we do do is that we, um, we, we issue spot, right? So we're always looking for that opportunity. We're always looking for kind of where that next, uh, we like to think that we're good problem solvers. Some may say that we know how to communicate. Some may say that no, we don't really know how to communicate. Um, and I'm sure there's so many lawyer jokes that we can insert right here. But um, in terms of name, image, and likeness, it's with the background that I have and the training that I have, we've been able to just really look at a way that we can competitively use this to our advantage. And so I'm looking forward to learning about the program here at Mizzou and seeing how we can take that foundation and continue to make that an advantage for us. And I think it's any time that we can give student athletes more opportunities, that's what we're going to do. Second row. Hi, Haley Lewis uh, in Kansas City with KSHB 41. Just want to ask you, obviously you're no stranger to making, breaking barriers. So as a female stepping into this role and also as a Hispanic female stepping into this role, what does that say about athletic programs nowadays and also maybe for young women who are looking up to you and hoping to possibly one day step into a role like this? So thank you for asking the question. It's nice to meet you. So I look at my niece, and I have two other nieces, and I look at uh, Sarah that I met this morning, who's one of our swimmers. Um, and I am so looking forward to the day that when my niece or when Sarah, when they want to be an athletic director or a CEO, um, I'm looking for, forward to that day when no one has to ask me that question. Um, I understand the importance of context, though, and I understand my responsibility. Um, I have a responsibility to do great work because I want to serve the University of Missouri, but I also want to keep that door open, and I want to keep that door open so that the incredibly talented people, regardless of their gender, regardless of their ethnicity, where they come from, and that's what I love about college athletics, right? Coach Pinkle, you, bu you built a team, and that's what I love. Like, if you can play, it doesn't matter where you come from. You can play, if you can perform, if you're gonna outwork and you're gonna compete, we've got a spot for you. So uh, I really appreciate that question and I understand the importance of context. Next question, row two on the corner right here. Hi, Desiree Mitchell 40 from PowerMizzou.com. Um, I know that uh, President Choi has mentioned a few different times that uh, you know one of the things he, he was impressed with was kind of your your vision, your innovation. Um, obviously, you haven't had a ton of time to start thinking about specifics, but was just wondering if you could offer some of the some of the specifics for for how you think you could you know do things differently at the zoo. Certainly, and thank you very much for the good pizza suggestion. Shakespeare's pizza was fantastic. <laughs> Um, so you, uh, your question was about what specifics on what I'm going to do next? Differently. Well, you know, I, I have a lot of listening and learning to do first. So for before I come in and say this is how we're going to do it, I want to find out what it is, we're, how we're doing it now. And I want to learn from the great people here. And then we're going to, like I said, we're going to be a department that's going to be defined by our work ethic, by our innovation, and by our team spirit. So, but first I need to listen and learn and get to know folks. And one thing we're gonna do right off the top, I met with the, all departments, with the whole staff this morning, and we're gonna do a SWOT analysis. Um, I wanna hear what, I wanna hear directly from the, the folks here. And then we're gonna take that and we're gonna start defining, like we're gonna start defining our, really our brand, who we are, make sure that we're all on the same page. And then let's figure out ways that we can continue to be innovative and move this forward. Well, we get sent for our next question, which will come up front. Allow me to ask you a question, if yes. that's okay. What are your thoughts on Texas 
and Oklahoma joining the SEC? Well, I am very glad that the University of Texas and the University of Oklahoma has followed Missouri's lead. So, <laughs> so I just say welcome, and it just means more. So, yes, thank you for asking. <laughs> Front row here. Hi, Desiree. Eric Blum from the Columbia Daily Tribune. Nice to meet you. Nice uh, you mentioned a little bit about this in your opening remarks, but leaving UNLV, it seemed like you were happy there. Why take this leap in the first place, and what is it about Mizzou that drew your interest? Uh, people. And I was very happy at, at UNLV because of the great people that we had, um, and, and I, we had great momentum. And I'm very proud of the, of the people and the work and the relationships that we had there. They're, they're very special, and I'm, I'm very thankful um, for UNLV. Uh, but people drew me here, too. People, opportunity, and promise. Um, I see, like I said, I, I really believe in, in President Choi's leadership. I really believe that the alignment is here. This is a special place, and the minute that we walked on campus, you could feel it. You could feel how special Mizzou is. And I just saw this is a great place. This is an AAU institution. It is the only Power Five in the entire state. You have great coaches, incredible student athletes, and I, I, just, be, I just really believed. So I, I came for the people, and I came for the belief. First row. You've mentioned both Conzo and, and Witt a couple times. Uh, curious what feedback you got from them, either before you accepted the job or since you have about Missouri specifically. Uh, that it's a great place. It's a really special place. You know, I met, um, I met Eli as well, and in June, um, he gave me a tour of that South End Zone project, and it was special. Um, and when I got to know him, his energy is infectious. You can just tell that, that he's building something special. And the whole, the whole department momentum, like, I, I'm excited about that. I'm excited of where we are now, but then also where we're going in the future. So it's, uh, it's going to be, it's a special place and it's a special time. Standing to the left, standing behind the back row. Desiree Brett did we see KTRS radio in St. Louis. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Um, you. You mentioned your brother. Can you explain your philosophy on how you will be an advocate for uh, student athletes here at Mizzou? Every decision that we make will be in the best interest of our student athletes. They are the reason why we do what we do. We have an incredibly important responsibility and one that we have to come to work every day with a grateful heart. Education can transform lives and athletics is our vehicle. We have to take that responsibility very, very seriously. And, and I know as a mother, um, I know what athletics and what, I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for education. So I, some of the best coaches that I've ever met are incredible teachers. And so we're in the education business. I get it, what we do is very, is, um, is high pro profile and there's a scoreboard and I embrace the competitive aspect, but also we're educators. First around the corner, please. Good morning, Desiree, Callum McAndrew, Columbia, Missouri. Uh, nice you mentioned that you, uh, you got, got to speak with the football team yesterday. Uh, I'm wondering if you had any chance to talk with Elijah Drinkwitz about goals and aspirations for that program. Absolutely. I ha I've met with, uh, with Eli several times, and he's, like I said, his energy is infectious, and we talked a lot about kind of closing that gap, but then also setting that standard, right? That's, ex that's so exciting. And so I know his goals, and I share those, and I I'm just excited to provide all those resources so that we can all be successful. To the back, please. Hi, Desiree. Welcome. Uh, Chris you. Trevino with the Tiger Radio Network. Um, first, let me say I'm jealous of your grandpa, 23 languages. I struggle with one. Uh, but, but as for your brother, Roman, and that's a great name, you mentioned how um, he's an inspiration to you. But I wonder, with all your accomplishments, and especially this particular appointment here, which is such a landmark hiring for the University of Missouri, how you think you might be an inspiration for him? 
Wow, I've never had that question. Um, I, I think he just knows that I love him dearly. And I think he's very um, appreciative and proud of, of, of how much he means to me. And I, I think he knows, um, yeah, I think at, based upon the conversations we have, and you know, one thing that we do after football games, like that's our way of, football has always been an incredibly important part of our family. Uh, whether it was watching, and I, I, my apolo- I'm, I think I'm gonna become a Kansas City Chiefs fan, I swear. Um, but we grew up San Francisco 49ers fans, and some of our, I mean, it was the 80s in San Francisco, right? That's what you do. Joe Montana, Bill Walsh, I mean, come on, the catch, everybody remembers it. Um, but it, football has been a way that after every one of my games, no matter what school I've been at, uh, you know, that's what we do. He'll commu- we'll, we'll text and he'll say, hey, what do you think? Why'd they go cover two? And, and, and so that's how we, that's how we communicate. Um, but I think in, I don't know, I don't know about the inspiration part. I just know how much that he knows how much I love him. So, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for our new director of athletics, Desiree Reed Francois. For members of the media, the next uh, set of one-on-one opportunities will take place. Uh, it'll take place in the uh, suite, the chancellor's suite, and so uh, you RSVP'd in advance to Christian, and so they will be making their way there. We ask you just to give them some, some time to get there, and then we'll allow you to begin to move forward. To the rest of you, thank you so much for being here. This is certainly exciting. M-I-Z, have a blessed day.